Do you want to animate someone else's My Little Pony puppet in Open Tunes? Or another downloaded puppet asset? Well today I'll show you where you can download this pony and how to animate him. Hello friends and welcome to a look at working with someone else's Open Tunes assets. And this follows on nicely from my video last week where I showed you how you can zip up a project or a single scene from a project to share with other users or as a backup. And if you missed that, there's a link to it in the description below. But this week I happened to come across a question on the OpenTunes Reddit asking how to use a My Little Pony project that had been shared by Age3RCM. So I downloaded the project and took a look and thought it would be a good way to show how to download and animate with someone else's project. So first let me take you through getting hold of and using this OpenTunes project and then we'll animate with it. But if you're happy to download and just use the project you can just follow the link in the description and join me later for my animation tips. So first follow the DeviantArt link in the description and you'll see this page for the project. So simply scroll down and click the link that takes you to his Simple Goods page. And then just enter your email address and an optional contribution if you'd like to help him out. And contributions for this kind of project always give encouragement to the authors. And I know he's already working to improve this puppet and to release more. So if you can help out, that'd be great. And then just click the button and you'll get an email with a link to download the 7z zip file. Which I did. But I don't have a program to unzip it. So I googled online unzip and then from a web page I unzipped this file which then allowed me to download a standard zip file from the site. And before I did anything else I scanned it with my virus checker because I don't know which sites are safe to unzip from. And all was good so I then unzipped this by choosing extract all from the context menu. And if you step inside the folder, this is the OpenTunes project folder. And you can tell it's a project folder because if you step inside there, you'll see the project XML file and the usual folders you'll find with an OpenTunes project. But there are two other files in here that you don't need. First, there's the OpenTunes logo. I'll delete that. And then a spare OpenTunes scene file, which was version one of this puppet, so we don't need that. So I'll delete that. And then inside the scenes folder, there's just one scene file, which is the three quarter view of the pony. So if you just copy this project file into my OpenTunes projects folder, which if you remember from last week, is stored in my OpenTunes stuff folder. So I'll just drag that in. So then I can just run up OpenTunes and take a look at this project. So let's do that. So here we are in OpenTunes. If I just choose to open another scene and then in my OpenTunes stuff projects folder I can find the project and scene that I've just downloaded. So here we are, this is the pony project and I've already had a quick look through this already so I know what's in here and I know we don't need the first column so I'll just delete that and then you can see a number, quite a lot of other columns with each of the body parts for this pony. And each one you can animate individually. And they're already connected together so that animating one column affects all the other necessary columns. So if we take a look in the stage schematic view, here we are. So you can see this is already organized for you. So there's an initial peg column and that's useful to set the initial position and scale of the pony. So we can move them over here and then scale them down like that. And then we've got the body column and that's connected to the neck, the belly and then the rear flank. And because of the connections as you animate one column all of the child connecting columns animate with it. So if I change to the rotation tool for the animate tool and choose the neck column as I animate that the head and all the facial features move with them. And I can move along and choose to animate just the head so I can lift the head up and again the eyes and face and ears move with it 
And if we zoom in a little closer, for the eye on the right, if I select the pupil column and then move that, the iris and the iris stripes move with it. And you'll notice that the pupil and iris is drawn outside of the eye area. But when you render this, it'll be drawn within the eye area, and that's because of the way these columns are set up in the effects. So if I change the effect schematic, and then find the eye, and as complicated as this looks, it's not really too complicated. So all the eye features are piped through this over effect, and then the matte in effect is used to draw the eye within the white area of the eye, which is this column here. So if we turn on the preview, and then choose the pupil column. If we move that, you'll see the coloured eye is drawn within the white area, wherever you place it. OK, so how do you animate the pony? Well, first, there's two ways to get started. One is to open the scene file, as I've done here, and then animate it. But if you want to animate another scene with this pony, you'd have to keep a copy of the original project and rename it, and then recopy it to this folder, which is possible, but just a bit fiddly. So the best thing to do is to start a different project and load this scene into it. And this is the best way to work if you want to animate the pony in more than one scene. So I've already created a project to animate this pony into. And if I load it, you can see it's got a single drawing in of the background. And then to add the pony, you simply go to the file menu, choose load as sub X sheet, and then choose the pony scene. And then you get the option to load or import the scene. And I'd recommend always importing the scene, which takes a copy of all of that project and brings it into this current project. So that means you can move this project as one complete unit and it contains all the data and assets that you need. And here it is. So all of those columns are now shown as a single column. And we can take a look at those columns for animating by stepping into this sub X sheet. And you can right click on any frame in this column and choose open sub X sheet. Or if you've got the toolbar, simply click this button here to do the same. So now we can see all the columns we had before. So again, I'll delete this first column because we don't need it. And to save keep scrolling across through the columns, I like having my X sheet on the right hand side but it's shown in the timeline view. And you can get to that in OpenToons by clicking the button at the top left here. And that means you can see more of the columns for animating. So to animate the pony, we use either the animate tool at the top here, as I've already shown you, or the skeleton tool down here. And we use these to rotate a column on the pony. And we won't be changing drawings for this model. So first, let's extend this single drawing for each level to last longer. So each body part is drawn in its own level, and each level only has one drawing. So to extend the drawings, you can simply highlight over the drawings and extend them out by dragging the little handle. Or you can use the menu in the X sheet for insert frame. And I've added the keyboard shortcut Control Insert to make this easier. And you'll also want to remove frames, so it's a good idea to add a shortcut for that too. So back on the timeline, I notice that a couple of columns are currently locked, so we'll unlock that by unticking that white button there. Yep, just the two. Click in frame one, and then press the keyboard shortcut, Control insert and that scrolls off the screen. You'll notice you can only see 18 frames, which for each part of the small animation might be enough, but if you alter the zoom at the bottom on the timeline, you can then see more. So let's extend that further. So to start animating, the best thing to do is to add a key in frame one for every column. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that, and that's the letter Z, or the letter Z if you prefer. So press Z, and then the arrow key to move down and tap Z in each column. Then simply for the column that you want to animate, go to the frame you want the animation to start at, press Z to add a key for the start of the animation, move along a number of frames, and personally, I like to move just one or two frames. And then 
with the animation tool set to rotation, rotate that part of the body. So that's the neck rotated. And if at the same time we want to rotate the head, you can then click on the skull column or the head peg column. And this is this gray circle on the side here. And it's been added to make it easier to use the skeleton tool. So let's do that. So if you choose the skeleton tool and change to animate mode, you can choose any part of the body to start animating. But it can be tricky to pick the right part of the body. This is why this drawing's here. So if we click on that, we're then animating the head. So then I like to use the cursor keys to move to the right frame. I'll press Z to add a key. And that marks the head in this initial position. Move along a couple of frames and then click and drag just to rotate the head there. So between frames 12 and 14, there's this small movement. So then a quick way to work out the timing is just to click in between those keys and then using your keyboard shortcut, control insert, add a few more frames. So I'll add four frames there. Click to the left and then tap the P key to play the animation. But once the animation is playing, click back before your keyframe and you can watch it moving in real time. And then press P again to pause. And if that's not going quick enough, click in between and then press control insert again. Click to the left and then P key. Click, click, click until you're happy with the timing and then move to the next part of the animation. But as I say, I find it tricky to use the skeleton tool, so I like using the animate tool. And then with the mouse pointer over the timeline, you can move up and down to a different column and then change to either position, for instance, to move the eye, undo that, or rotation, and then add your animation. Again, press Z, to set the initial position, move a couple of frames, and then animate it. And then click before your keys, press P to play the animation, and then adjust the timing with your keyboard shortcut. And then try again. And simply build up your animation one piece at a time. And to make it easier to view the columns you're interested in, you can hide some other columns. And you can do this by clicking and dragging over the column headers, then right click and choose Fold Column. So now you can see fewer columns while you're working on the legs. And then when you're ready for the head columns to come back, just click on the area where they were folded and they will appear again. One last thing to mention, the front two legs have got a mesh column placed over the middle of the leg. So to animate the middle part of the leg, it's the mesh column that you animate, not the actual drawing column here. So if I wanted to animate this leg, I want to animate the upper leg column first. So I'll choose a frame, press Z to add a key, move along a couple of frames, and then with the animate tool selected, on rotation mode, I can just move the whole leg forward, and then do the same for the mesh level. Press Z to set the initial key. A couple of frames later, I'll rotate that backwards. And then if I want to, I can do the same for the hoof. So Z, a couple of frames, and then bring the hoof back. And as I've said before, control insert to work out the timing and then press play. So I'll go ahead and continue animating this pony, and I'll see you in a minute. So here we go. Here's my little animation using this pony project. And it's just a few simple animation movements. And for some of them, I had to animate frame by frame. But for a couple of hours worth of work, I'm pretty happy with it. So huge thanks to H3RCM for sharing the project. So a couple of things just to point out. Firstly, the eye blink. For that, on the mask eye level, I adjusted, using the animate tool, the scale 
With the first key set at 100% vertical scale, so again, the initial key. The next key, I reduce it a little bit. So you can see there, it just shrinks down. And all of the containing parts of the eye reduce with it. Then the eye is almost fully closed, just down to 25%. I then also deleted each part of the eye just to make it disappear and show the eye closing. And then opened it a little bit more and then fully open. So that gives quite a realistic eye blink. And the second thing is, while animating in the sub egg sheet, you can't initially see what's on the main timeline. If you want to do so, you can click this button at the far right here. So first we'll turn off preview mode. And that shows the background from the main timeline. And you may have noticed then, when I turned on the preview mode, it removed the extra lines from some parts of the body. So for instance, the ear has this line here, and that's a zero thickness line. So it doesn't draw an outline between the ear and the head, which gives a more convincing overall body shape. And finally, if we close this sub -X sheet by clicking this button here and go to the main timeline, when you first do this, You'll only have one frame shown on the timeline. To show all the drawings from the subject sheet, you have to right click on the column header and choose Resequence. And that exposes all of the created frames on the main timeline. And then you just need to extend the background to last as long as your animation. So that's it. That's how you can download this pony to animate with, but also how you can download other animators projects to use in your own. So get out there and get sharing. And if you try this out, drop your animations over on my Discord. It'd be great to see them. And if you've got any questions about this or anything else Open Tunes related, drop them down below or in my Discord or join me on my Sunday live streams where I animate, share viewers' work and answer your questions. So do subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next one. I'd love to see you over there. And that's... A guarantee.